Have you wondered what is branding? What exactly does it consist of? And who is it meant for? You hear me talking all the time about working with brands and working on sponsored campaigns and how a brand is the entity that you're going to reach out to. But have you thought about your own branding and what that should consist of? Not just your website, but also your social media platforms because really, that is you, right? It's your influence. Well, today I am interviewing brand specialist, Phil Palin, and we are diving in specifically to what is branding. I am here with Phil Palin. How are you, Phil? I'm wonderful. I just ran to the kitchen to get my afternoon tea, which is oh so British of me here in London, UK. Mm -hmm. Yes, I am so excited. Um, Phil and I had the opportunity to meet at Everything Food Conference last May. We sat on a panel together. Phil was the um, facilitator, for lack of a better word, I guess. Uh, and it was hilarious the entire time. So if he gets me giggling now, don't be surprised at all. So challenge accepted. Okay. Excellent. All right. Well, Phil, will you introduce yourself and your business to my audience for me? Yeah, I'd love to. Um, you're one of my favorite people. And by the way, um, so Jenny did an Instagram takeover on my account about a week and a half, two weeks ago. And that was so much fun. And I turned it into a little IG video. I'll talk about it later, but I am Phil Palin. I'm a brand strategist. My clients are personalities on TV shows. I've worked on shows. I've worked with politicians um, and also just, you know, business owners, everyday um, people with an idea wanting to create something to show for a passion um, in most cases. So typically as a brand strategist with a focus on personal branding, I'm focused on three things in this order, positioning, building something to show for that great idea and then and only then promoting that brilliant idea that you positioned and built so position build promote typically i'm working in those stages and quite literally jenny in every industry so i've worked with marine biologists my longest client is a shark on shark tank just had the premiere on sunday night um i've worked with nobel peace prize winners i've got clients right now like a dentist and a jewelry store and all over the world so it's a lot of fun Yes. And if you're looking for an example of an awesome Instagram account that is beautifully mm -hmm. branded, Phil's is amazing. So it's at Phil Palin, right? Yeah. Thank yeah. you for that. That's that's um, a compliment from anyone I appreciate, but a compliment from you on my Instagram is even especially awesome. Thank you. Yeah. I spend way too much time on it. Um, so I'm <laughs> glad, it, glad it's paying off. Thank you. Totally is. All right. So... <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about what exactly is branding. What does that consist of? Branding is defined by so many people in so many ways to the point where it almost becomes confusing. You know what I mean? It's kind of like, you know, we have Jeff Bezos. He has the best definition. He says your brand is what uh, people say about you, what others say about you when you're not in the room. That's the, that's, I believe is the closest definition of branding, but you look at, you know, all kinds of people and their take on this and it, and it becomes confusing. My definition is very simple. You know, I don't come from a corporate background. I've never worked for an agency. That's not my world. I like to keep things simple and actionable. You know, I work with individuals, smaller, leaner type companies. So even if I'm working with someone fancy, we're not spending a lot of money to get results. So branding, in my opinion, or as I define this, is achieving consistency between who you are in real life and how you present yourself online. In other words, recreating the in-person experience online. Every single person watching this, every single person in your audience is made up of two elements, content, what you say, and personality, how you say it. And we use the latter as our secret weapon, weapon to keep people coming back to you and only you for more. So that's kind of my little definition. And I have to tell you, I think you were the first person that I really heard 
say branding with adding in the personality. Because I think a lot of my audience consists of bloggers, primarily a large part is probably food bloggers, some DIY, home decor, all of that. And I think that often gets lost is the personality. And that is, as influencers, we need to have that. So the fact that that's part of your definition, I just love because it is. It's so important to be able to have that voice and for people to know and be able to connect to you that way. Thank you. I appreciate that. And I think one of the reasons why you and I get along is that we um, we understand the value of that element, which is often chalked up as nice to have, not need to have. The idea of personality, the idea of aesthetic, right? There's a lot of people who would be very quick to cut branding off the budget, you know, if you're working with limited time and resources. But guess what? Now more than ever, you need personality if you want to stand out from the rest. And I just love that you and I have jobs that are not really going to go anywhere, anywhere quickly because Jenny, every single day, these elements become more and more important and people can't just do the bare minimum. We can't just we can't just exist online because if you exist, you won't stand out and no one is going to care what you're doing. And that's kind of why there's some some pressure and now why there's some um, value attached to these kinds of more qualitative things. Yes. And I think that I love the way that you say that. It just it kills me because I think that that's often so missed by so many people that they just feel like, well, they see one food blogger doing it one way and they think oh, I have to do it exactly the same way and everything should sound similar. When in reality, in the digital age that we live in, you should be attracting the, the right audience and also repelling the wrong audience. Not everyone is going to love you, and that's okay. And I think that's where it kind of comes in, I think, a little bit is with the branding because of the personality aspect. If not everyone loves you, then it's a sign that you're doing something right. Um, you know, I've never oh, said man. that before. Here we are coming up with brand new sound bites, Jenny. Um, <laughs> no, but let's just riff on that thought for a second. If, if not everyone loves you, it means you're doing something right. Now, more than ever, geography matters less. The fact that you, where are you right now? You're in- um, Charlotte. Yes, Charlotte, that's right. I always, I, I always think, is it Charlotte or is it Atlanta? Because those are the two airports that I always go to and I know you're near one of the airports that I'm always in. Like, you're so close. Yeah. So you're in Charlotte. I'm in England. And no one really cares other than it's interesting part of our discussion. Might be something you and I talk about if we were sitting having coffee. And that's cool. You know, um, but beyond that, geography doesn't matter. So just take that off the list of things that people care about. So your clients could be anywhere. Um, I have, you know, my longest client that I mentioned, who's very fancy, um, we've met in person four or five times and literally, you know, in the course of six years. So, so geography doesn't matter. What does matter? Uh, one, someone might argue, well, the, you know, what the information you share, the products you sell. Nope. Nope. That doesn't really matter, matter either because chances are now that geography is not a factor, we could find it somewhere else online. So that's when we kick into this third kind of layer where we go, what keeps them coming back to me? Why are they going to buy my product and not someone else's? Right. And so that's the personality. That's that secret, secret ingredient that keeps us coming back to you and only you for more. And it's honestly a huge piece of what I teach when you're pitching, because that is what sets you apart. And that's why I put together my own process for all the rest of the bloggers to be able to use on how to pitch. I remember the day that I told my mom that I had created this course and I was gonna teach, it was gonna teach bloggers how to pitch. And she stopped what she was doing and said, but what, aren't they gonna take like work away from you? And I looked at her and I was like, no, they each have their own unique voice. And that's where it comes in. So it doesn't make a difference that I'm pitching the same pasta company as Mary from Restless Chipotle because she's going to yeah. put her Mary spin on it and I'm going to put the Melrose family spin on it. Yeah, I love that perspective. It's happy. It's realistic. It's optimistic. Um, it's we're not really competing with each other. Um, there's a lot of work to be had and a lot of opportunities to be had. And particularly in your space, this idea of influence, 
um, on social media. Like if anything, it's growing. You know, companies are looking to dedicate advertising spend, marketing dollars um, on proof, you know, on something where there's proof that it's uh, increasing impressions or increasing views in whatever way we define these results, you know, in whatever way we define that. So it's pretty exciting that um, every year opportunities grow in the space because and a lot of what I'm speaking at conferences and online or wherever else I am. Um, good luck trying to track me down. I'm like Carmen San Diego. Um, <laughs> but it's like all these brands are so focused on humanizing their brands, you know. And I've been speaking about this for years before this, you know. I don't want to say that I'm a trendsetter because I'm not. It's a lot bigger than me. But years ago, even when this idea of personal branding was just kind of getting started, I was like, I started doing this stuff, I was 21, 22, I'm almost 30. Don't remind me. Um, I, I'm almost like, 40, so I get it. <laughs> yeah, babe, you look great. Um, and so it's like, you know, we're trying to humanize brands. This is what we're talking about. It's like, what is that personality? How excited are we to tweet or engage with a logo on social media? We have no idea who we're communicating with. This is what companies struggle with. And the fact is, any opportunity to attach a face, a personality, an opinion, a perspective to a company, then uh, they're going to do it because this is what sells. So to your point, we're not competing with each other. There's so much opportunity. In fact, people should be collaborating and excited about you know, all of this and, and to stay up on the latest trends. Absolutely. So now what would you say as a blogger or influencer, what are the key components that they need to have for branding across website and social media? Because we always talk about the fact, well, your Instagram audience expects something different than your YouTube audience. But what is the branding aspect that we can kind of keep consistent across the board? That's the key word is consistency, I would say, um, and also the prioritization of where you should be nowadays. So you mentioned something earlier that I was thinking about, and that's the, the, the tendency to want to dart in 100 different directions today based on what we see from our competitors. Look what that person is using for their font and their color and their typography. And now I've spent four hours researching my competitors and I'm overwhelmed. When we have a hundred doors that we can walk through, how many do we actually walk through? None of them because we stand there staring at them. Yes. Whereas, whereas um, I would say nowadays, as it relates to your brand, you need to prioritize where your audience is and focus. For years, I taught this idea Rather than being average on 10 platforms, be a rock star on three. And I've since revised that soundbite to be a superstar on one. Because, right, you know, this idea of kind of specificity or rocking that one platform, it's much better to be really, really good at one. Now, someone like me, um, social media is, you know, a part of, of what I render as a service to clients, the positioning the build, which I would include photography, brand identity, and your website in that order. And I can talk to why that order exists later if you want. And then promotion. It's kind of like so many people are so quick to stick a for sale sign out front of the house before it's actually staged and positioned properly. So if you try and take a house to market that hasn't, you know, that hasn't been built or staged, then you're only going to get a fraction of the value that you deserve. So the key elements here, consistency, which you said, prioritizing your platforms and your efforts based on where your audience is. You should have a little bit of very basic market research to know exactly where that, um, that audience is. And then the final one is showing us your brand, not just telling us. So it's funny when you like refer to me as influencer, I'm like, I don't deserve that title. Oh my God, I'm the microist of influencers. But, but to be, you know, and I have, an, I have another client, one of my favorite clients I've worked with over the years, signed Michelle Branch, uh, Katy Perry, Sheryl Crow to their first record deals, Judy Stakey. And Judy was one of the first clients that hired me and said, Phil, I trust you. Build my website. Tell me what to do on social media. I've signed up. I'm a yes for everything. Just do. And I was like, oh, my God, she trusts me to do everything. You know, that was my first moment. But Judy used to go. She's a, she mentors songwriters. So she's actually been to American Idol auditions. She's auditioned for The Voice. She was.
went through it because she thought she's going to be the superstar of America, but because she wanted to be familiar with the process. And I feel the same way about Instagram. I take my Instagram very seriously and I literally write that quote on the footer of my website that people want to see. Because I say that when people say, Phil, I, I saw your Instagram, I, I take Instagram very seriously. And I do because I need to understand how all of this stuff works if I'm working with these types of clients or helping people position themselves for success online. I take it seriously. I have an aesthetic. I, I want to show people my brand. I'm very careful about you know how my feed looks and, and, and um, the visuals that I use, on, even on my stories. I mix in on-the-go type stuff, but I also have that kind of more curated stuff, which is, in my opinion, what people should expect of me and what I should expect of myself if this is what I claim to be. So to review, um, what did I say? So show us your brand. That was item number three. Number one was consistency. And number two was, what was it? Damn it. I need my tea. Um, it was, yeah, yeah. It was, um, well, kind of respect the order, position, build, and promote. I hope people watching this are taking notes because you're doing a better job than me. Ah! <laughs> so, all right. If I, um, and I love the way that you talk about Instagram because, because Instagram, I feel like for influencers has become such an important platform for us. The brands want to see us over there. They, we are able to build an audience over there. Um, and for food bloggers and DIY, home decor, whatever it might be, uh, it's an important platform. And you are like, if you haven't looked at Phil's feed, you have to go look at it to see exactly what I'm talking about. But it's beautiful. And it's very Thank strategic. You. And it goes through and shows us the exactly what your brand is going to be about. Plus, your stories, not only do you, like you said, you let us into like the personal and the travel and everything that comes along with it, but you're also teaching which is something that I love because you're talking about like you have the podcast that you also every once in a while would promote, but then you're also giving away like key information on branding in your stories. I've literally, I think I've, instead of going forward, I go back on yours to be like, wait, what did yes. he say? Wait, what did he say? <laughs> so important. And it's such an easy thing to be able to, to do and apply in our business to be able to put, personality, and also that consistent branding across it. Love it. Thank you. I appreciate that. And I am still kind of um, coming to terms with the fact that I literally spend hours a week on Instagram. And I think, is this really the best use of your time right now? And I remind myself that it is. And here's why, Jenny. And I'm excited to share this with you. Because this, by the way, is all new developments. If you scroll back to my feed and even October, no November, you'll see a difference. I have been actively working on this in the last 12 months to improve it because I feel for years I've talked about Twitter and I still do like Twitter and think it's great for business but Instagram is taking over and if you don't if you're not on that train then you're kind of missing an opportunity before everyone joins the train and no one cares about you anymore you know so I've really really been trying to own the strategy that I teach and that's this thinking of Instagram in three actually now four different platforms, your feed, your stories, your live, and now IGTV, which is still brand new and we don't really know what's gonna happen with that. Um, but I'm testing the waters to see what people respond to. And what I do, and, and I share this because this is a recent thought, but I justify spending a decent amount of, on, of time on Instagram. And I mean, included in that is Canva. I'm using instead of Photoshop now, I upgraded my Canva account to include my custom branded fonts and colors that you can upload. How amazing is that? Um, you know, so I, I'm cut together one little graphic and then I upload it. Then in Instagram, I add all the text and stuff on top. So it doesn't look too pre-produced. But when I make a story and I put a lot of effort into a story, which for the record is not every week because some week I don't have time. When I do that, I save it either as a highlight for other people to see or for myself because I can use that as course material. I can use that in trainings, on, in webinars, in, in talks, in whatever I want. And so I think the key is to think now of content creation, how can we make this more efficient? How can we kill a few birds with one stone? We're not gonna kill any birds, but you know this saying, right? Instead of just putting all this time into one use, how can we repackage it? you know, send it as an email blast, post it as a thoughtful post on Facebook. That's 
the mindset I'm of right now, and I'm just excited to share that because it's already started to work for me. So if, if you know, this stuff does take time, but if you can double up in some way, it's very helpful. Yes, and I totally on board with that. Uh, as many of my listeners know, the live broadcast gets turned into a podcast, which then gets turned into a YouTube video, which then is my promotion throughout the entire week for Facebook, Instagram. I like the thought though of taking it from the Instagram standpoint and then turning it into content. Because I think that we think, well, stories are so short, how can I possibly turn that into content? But you can take and develop that shorter content into longer hand and turn it into a bit more that would go along with it. So that is so, so smart. I love that. Now, if we were to look at specific niches, do you think that the branding should vary by niche? So I know you talked about the profile picture in particular in the beginning, and you said how having a face and having that person to it, um, when it's someone like us, where it's branding and we're coaches and we kind of like, this is what we do, as compared to, let's say, a food blogger who's known for her um, recipes and it, it, the specific type of recipes that she's known for. Should it be a picture of her? What do you think works best based on the niches? Yep. I always go back to this idea of recreating the in-person experience. Any kind of piece of advice that I would give is rooted in that uh, perspective or that philosophy, if you will. So um, what makes you, if we're talking about you as a brand, we want to really think about what makes you great. Is it what you say or is it more how you say it? It's never one or the other. It's always a combination of both, but I'll give you an example. Um, someone who skews more to what you say instead of how you say it could be someone like Anderson Cooper when they tried to give him a daytime talk show to you know be focused on his personality what happened it got canceled because no one cared Anderson Cooper delivers the news or does an interview and it's very much about what he shares not necessarily how he shares it again it's one or the other where someone like Ellen would it really matter what Ellen is talking about as long as we're giggling and laughing we're happy it's how she says it so the key to this, Jenny, is becoming self-aware. I can't, you know, it wouldn't be right of me to give an answer one way or the other. Should it be a logo? Should it be your face? Every single brand is a little bit different. But in order to answer this question, it's not what I'm going to tell you. It's going to be it's going to be awareness of your own brand and what your audience wants and expects of you. If you, your personality, um, your face, if that's what people connect with, then I would definitely have a profile photo that's your face. I'd have um, your social media bio, um, usually written in two sentences. Tell me who you are, why I should care in sentence number one. Sentence number two, uh, reveal something you know that, that indicates your personality. So I often give this one as an example. My social media bio has been the same for a while. Brand strategist for people and businesses. That's the first sentence, who I am why you should care. Second sentence, if your baby's ugly, it's my job to tell you. And people are, people always laugh at this, or sometimes on Twitter, they actually send me pictures of their babies, um, which I don't need to see your babies, but you know, but you know, you get the joke, right? You get the joke. It's like, I sometimes, you know, if I'm, if I'm, you know, positioning, building and promoting brands, we need to make some changes. Some people have a little idea that it needs to be tweaked slightly, but that, you know, that has become, that little nugget of personality as my second sentence has become a branded entity that people associate with me. My next book, I, I don't have it here, but I'm working on it. I'm about 75% done. It's already designed, of course, Jenny, you know. I just have to fill the inside with information. <laughs> um, but it's called Is Your Baby Ugly? And that's one of the keynotes that I give. And that's all from this little memorable moment of injecting personality. So to answer your question full circle here, you know, if it's you that is the focus and, you know, the personality, the how you share it, then I'd have your your face in the profile photo. If it's more of like a branded type entity that's more content driven, maybe a logo, but just like what companies are trying to find now, ways to personify their brand, personify, humanize your brand in every possible way and opportunity because it will usually work for you. Okay. I love that. So Mary just asked a question and she was actually the example I gave before. So she says, so if you have three separate brands, but they're mm -hmm. interrelated, 
Do you specifically mm-hmm. brand each one or do you say, hey, I'm schizo and here's what I do? <laughs> <laughs> well, we all know Starbucks and we know Starbucks for lots of things. In fact, I don't even like their coffee. Um, so I guess they're not going to hire me now as a micro influencer. I don't like their coffee, but I love their mugs. So back home, uh, home, where is that? I'm based in Santa Monica for now, and that'll change next month. Um, but I have mugs from every every country and city that I've been to. I just love the size of their mugs and everything. Um, Starbucks, when they started though, I tell you this, when they started, they were good at one thing, coffee. We knew them for coffee. And once they built a following, had customers, um, proved their business, then and only then they expanded. A lot of times, if you're already juggling three brands, I'm immediately concerned that's a lot of work. If you have three separate brands, that's three separate social media platforms, you know, and then you've got to have a few, and then all of a sudden the day is gone. So three three brands, I'm glad to hear they're interconnected. I would be very focused on one brand, if possible, as the umbrella, explore this idea of sub branding, right? So if I'm Phil Palin, I have Phil Palin Collective, which is my agency, and I have Phil Palin Dot Expert, which is, um, you know, my career as a speaker. Those are the two kind of areas in which I work, but it still follows under un, under one. I know this is slightly off topic, but it's important to to consolidate where possible. So I wouldn't give. I wouldn't give all three brands kind of equal presence. I would choose one if you're a personal brand or a smaller operation and let the other two, exactly as you said, be inter kind of connected and and essentially build a a hierarchy, a structure so that this makes it your, this makes your life a little bit easier. Okay. Perfect. No. And yeah. Um, So we have covered, I feel like, so much, and there's so much more, which is why I'm so excited that you gave in the comments, in the description, and in the show notes for the podcast, you are giving a guide for branding, and it gives a ton of information, walks them through. Tell them a little bit about the guide. Sure. I thought this would be good to share with you and your peeps. It's exactly the type of thing that I would share with an audience if I got up on stage for 45 minutes and just scrape the surface and then people get excited and they're into it and they're like, I want more, but we don't always have time for more. So what I did was I compiled a more detailed PDF download that walks through through positioning your brand, the formula, building it, building something to show for it, photography, brand identity website, and then of course promoting it once you build something. So in there, there's tips for your photographers, there's some stuff on prioritizing your platforms on social media. It's still short, four or five, six pages, I think, I can't remember, but it's just a consolidated version of some of the things we've talked about today geared towards helping you take action on this. It's great to talk about it all day, but it's better to actually take action. Absolutely. And Phil, where are the best places to find you? I've obviously talked about your Instagram, so if y'all haven't gone over to his Instagram yet, you need to go over there. Where else? I'm on Instagram a lot, so it's at Phil Palin on Instagram and Twitter. Um, I mentioned my two kind of, uh, verticals in my business, philpallon.co is the, the work I do for clients. Um, and then philpallon.expert is where I blog and I have, um, you know, my speaking topics and my podcast is actually one that I would want to mention because yeah. my, my partner, my business partner, Lauren and I, uh, we do this for a living and we actually created a podcast that lets listeners into the work that we do as part of the process. So we get a stranger on the phone for 20 minutes, they bring a particular area of focus to the table and we discuss it. And it's it's completely anonymous. It's called brand therapy. And if, if what we talked about today has been interesting for you, then I highly recommend downloading the notes. You'll put the link and then checking out the podcast so you can kind of listen in on some of the, the challenges that you'll probably relate to that we faced at, I think we're over 30 episodes now. Yes. And I was binge listening to them and they're, they're just, you get pulled into it. Like, and just the conversations that you just have, you always have me giggling. I'm giggling listening to the podcast half the time. So I appreciate so much Phil for taking the time being different time zones and all the craziness. Um, And I know that they got a ton of information from this. So thank you so much. 
I would love to meet everyone who took the time to listen and hang out. And I can't actually see the actual comments unless you put them up there. So I'm going to go check that out right after this. But if there's anything, any questions or anything I can give you a hand with, just reach out. And I look forward to continuing the conversation with anyone who took the time to, to hang out with us today. Perfect. Thanks so much. All right, guys, I appreciate you so much for taking the time and listening in. If this is a video that you are looking for, for more information on how to build your influence as a blogger through branding and an avatar and things of this nature, please just give the video a like. I appreciate it so much. And it lets me know what you're looking for. Also, if you haven't subscribed yet to the channel, make sure that you do because I'm continually bringing you trainings and information that I think is going to help you master your influence today.